All right, everyone, we're going to be continuing our exploration of SQL with what is my favorite keyword in SQL, the group by function. So the group by keyword is so important because a lot of times when you're doing work in your company or academia, research, whatever you're working with SQL for, um, it's going to be important to think about various characteristics of groups of your data rather than just individual data points. To give kind of a motivating example before we jump into all of these examples in the code, Maybe think about if you're in politics, you could be thinking about groups as states. So within each U.S. state, what's the fraction of Republicans or Democrats or how many people are in each state? Um, in our example, we're looking at a sub, uh, data set on students. So we might care about groups of majors, which is exactly what we'll look at next. But within each student major, you might care about what's the average GPA? Are some majors performing better than others? What's the average count? Or I mean, What's the count? So are some majors just bigger than others? So a lot of times in the real world, you care about what are some different characteristics on my groups and how do those characteristics um, differ between one group and the other? So with that said, let's go ahead and look at how to use the group by keyword on our student data set. The first cell is going to be the easiest use of it. So actually, maybe rather counterintuitively, we're going to start at the end of the statement to best understand it. So we're going to say we're going to group this data by major. So there's nine different majors that are in this data. So in your mind, I want you to imagine that we've grouped all these students into their respective majors. So there's these nine clusters, and each cluster contains all of the students who are in that major. Now the question is, what data would I like on each cluster? And that's where we come to the beginning of the statement, where the select statement is. So the first piece of data I would like is the major itself. Does that make sense to ask for for each of the nine groups? Yes, it does, because each of the nine groups was defined based on the major. So it makes sense to ask for the major. The other piece of information I want is the average GPA within each of the groups. Does that make sense to ask for? Yes, it does, because I can go inside each group and say, hey, everyone in this major, go ahead and tell me what's your average GPA. Now, what doesn't really make any sense is if I replace this average GPA with GPA, because now I'm kind of saying, it, I'm not really making it clear what I want from each major. I can go in and say, hey, give me your GPA, but there's a bunch of students who are in each major, so it doesn't really make sense for them to give me all of their GPAs. I more want like an aggregate function, like the standard deviation of their GPAs or the mean of their GPAs or the max or minimum. So make sure when you're writing a group by statement, everything that happens in your select block is information that you can get from grouping your data by the major. Uh, maybe other things that don't make sense are to ask for the name of a student within each major. Because within each major, there's a bunch of students, maybe 100 or 1,000 students. It doesn't really make sense to ask for what's the name within each group or each major. Maybe what makes sense is ask for the uh, name that's first alphabetically or last alphabetically, or the name of the student who has the average GPA within each major. So these are things that you can logically ask for, but SQL will yell at you in many situations if you try to ask for properties of a group that are not aggregations, such as what I've written here. So I'm going to change this back to how it was. So if I run the cell, we get exactly what we'd expect. We would get nine lines, each one corresponds to a major, and we get the average of the GPAs of all students who are in that major. So I have a bunch of examples here because I think group by is very important, so I want to give you a bunch of use cases. Let's say we want to make it a little bit more complicated, right? We want to get the lowest GPA or minimum GPA for third years in each major, and we want to order that alphabetically by major name. A lot of things to ask for, but let's break it down step by step. Again, let's start at the group by. So of course we're going to group by major, that's for sure. Also there's a where clause, so before I even do the group by, I take my student data and I say, uh, give me only third years, and then I group by major. So at this point, I've just subsetted to all the third years who are in my data, and then I've grouped them into categories by all the nine different majors they could be in. The next thing I want to look at is the select statement. And again, I want to do these logical checks to make sure that everything I'm asking for in the select statement is, is valid, is legal. So the first thing I'm asking for is the major. Is that legal? Yes, because I'm splitting up these groups based on major. So within each group, there can only be one major, so it's fine. Then I'm asking for the minimum GPA, and I'm calling it min GPA. 
Is that legal to ask for? Yeah, because it's a function of GPA within each major. It's not all the GPAs. So in a nutshell, I'm saying, give me the name of the major and give me the lowest GPA within that major. The last part of this is I'm going to order the results of this whole thing by the name of the major. And it's arguable I didn't even need to do this because sometimes when you do a group by, actually most of the time when you do a group by, it's going to order the groups alphabetically or sort them for you. So let's do an experiment and see if this even matters. So if I run this, I get the same kind of thing. I get these uh, low GPAs, min GPA for each major. And again, these are for third years because of the where clause that I used up here. So uh, this is kind of using everything we've learned so far, the select statement, the where statement, the group by statement, the order by statement, um, using the as keyword. So we're seeing everything at, at work at once. And just to kind of test our experiment, if I get rid of this order by, I have a feeling it's not going to matter. Yeah, I think it's ordered in the same way no matter what. So didn't actually need that. Let's look at a couple more examples to kind of get a feel for how group by works in different situations. Let's say I want to get the average GPA for each major and years three and four. So the key difference here is you're going to see I'm grouping by two things. So just as I can order by two things, like order by one thing and then order by a different thing secondarily, I can also group by two things. So here I'm grouping by major and year. And before I explain that, look at this where clause, which says year is greater than or equal to three. So before I do anything, I'm saying that uh, I'm only looking at third and fourth years. So now you imagine the data contains third and fourth years in all of the nine different majors. And now I group by two categories, major and year. So now instead of looking at each group is just a major, it's a little bit more complicated, but not too difficult to understand. Now each group is a combination of major and year. For example, I have history majors who are third years as one group. I have history majors who are fourth years as a second group. I have art majors who are third years as another group. I have art majors who are fourth years as a different group. So in all, I'm going to have nine different majors, two different years, because remember, I'm only looking at third and fourth years because of the where clause. So I'll have 18 different groups in all. And now the rest is the same. Let's see if the select statement is legal stuff. I can ask for the major because each group will only have one major. Each group will have one year. And I can ask for the average GPA in each of the 18 groups. So let's see if we get what we'd expect. Indeed, we get 18 things. Again, zero indexing. So there's 18 rows here. And as we see, we have a major occurring twice. But that's only because one of them is for third years who are in that major. One is for fourth years who are in that major. And each time we have the average GPA. So that's a way to use group by on not just one column, but a combination of columns. And you can put even more columns here. Let's look at one last uh, example that's a little bit more complicated. We're going to get the average GPA grouped by the first letter of a student's name. So if you notice, uh, let's see, oh, we have a bunch of students here and their names start with various letters in the alphabet. Let's say that we want to do an experiment to see if the first letter of your name affects your GPA or is correlated with your GPA. So again, let's start at the end. We're going to group by something called first letter. But you're thinking, wait, there's no first letter field in my data. This is where SQL can get a little bit confusing, but um, it's only because of the way things are evaluated. So we're going to group by first letter, whatever that is. But what is that? To see what that is, we look at the select statement. So in the select statement, we use this built-in substring function of SQL. And into the substring function, we take the name of the student. Name is something in our data. It's just the name of the student. And this one comma one says, just give me the first letter of the student's name. So overall, this substring name one one says, take the first letter of the student's name, alias it, or give it the name of first letter. Now we see where the first letter comes from. Now that we have this first letter, we can group by it. So to say that again, because I know this can be a little bit confusing. For me, it was definitely confusing. But we're taking each student in the data. We're grabbing the first letter of their name. And then we're using that new variable to group by. So we're going to group everyone whose name starts with A together, everyone whose name starts with B, and we're going to have 26 groups. Now, for each of the 26 groups, I'm asking for what's the first letter of their name. That's valid because that's literally the thing I grouped on. And I'm asking for what's the average 
of the GPA for each of these people whose name starts with A or B or C or whatever. So let's run this. We should get 26 columns, 26 rows, sorry. So we see it's already nice and sorted for us, and we get the average GPA within each group. Okay, so hopefully that was understandable, and hopefully going through all these different use cases of group by was instructive. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And then the next video will be looking at having clause in SQL. Until next time.